Hello friends and Sony fans all over the world. Welcome to a video about the BRC-X400 professional Sony pan tilt zoom camera integrated with Skyhoy RCP. This camera and this collaboration, this integration we have made is set up with Sony uh, in Japan actually. So we are proud together to bring this to market showing how the Skyhoy RCP enables you to integrate this easily into your professional broadcast workflows. So I will go in detail, in quite some detail, about all the things that this camera uh, allows us to do uh, in this video. But the most basic thing, of course, is that you have an RCP joystick able to um, control the iris of the camera. So uh, let's dive right into it. Um, first, looking at the cabling, Skyhoy products, power over Ethernet, single cable solution. The Sony camera is also an IP enabled camera. So since it's Visca over IP, you don't need any uh, of the classic uh, serial um, daisy chain setups that you might have been used to. Let me see if it actually has. It does have RS422 ports for serial connection if you want it. But in this case, of course, we use IP to control the camera. The RCP in itself is laid out in the classic Skyhoy style. It means that we have a few buttons here which are set up to control what we do with the eight knobs on the top. So um, when I press this button, you see that I access the main menu, which is considered to be exposure mode. So currently it's in auto exposure, but if we are using an RCP, it's likely we want to turn it to manual. So we do that. We can also bring it to shutter speed or to iris, or I think, does it have gain priority? Not in this case. So we have shutter speed and iris directly. If I set it to iris, obviously we should see the effect of the iris joystick if I uh, move it. And you can see whatever the camera is now pointing at, I'm actually adjusting the iris. So even though it's an RCP, it is actually able to control the pan, tilt and zoom dimensions of the camera. So that would be the joystick pad on the RCP that is set up to do this. And if I press the edge of this one, you see the camera is moving and I can also control the speed. If I go to the system menu here, I can um, actually uh, turn off the PT slow. We'll get back to that feature in a moment. And you can see I'm able to um, pan the camera over here. So this is actually a touch sensitive uh, or pressure sensitive joystick pad that will allow you to do um, some level of pan tilt zoom control. It's not as precise as an analog joystick, but it's definitely good enough for small tweaks and whatever an RCP operator should do with such a camera, if he should do anything at all, because you might want to disable the features, which is easily done, because even though I'm presenting you a standard configuration, which is what you'll get out of the box for the BSC X400, you can still tweak all sorts of settings inside the web interface of the unit. For instance, you could disable pan tilt zoom control, assuming that you had a pan tilt operator sitting next to your shader. Now, let's uh, continue with the demonstration. The iris mode was selected here, but if I changed it to shutter speed, you see I have access to the shutter speed up here and I can now uh, decrease the shutter speed. I can increase it and the values are shown here. Now, it's very important to notice that all these values, uh, the, the ranges for iris you see in this display down here and the shutter speed up there, they are pulled out of the camera. So there will be a, a correct um, shutter speed shown compared to what the camera has inside of it. Our implementations always aim to be as two-way as possible at all. It's not always possible, but with Sony cameras in particular, they are so well made as a Visca camera, providing all the settings of the camera easily over to the RCP. So in this case, uh, it was no problem to ask the camera, so what is your shutter speed? And we show it in display when we then change it. Of course, we make sure these two things are synchronized. We can uh, go back to uh, manual mode, which would be our um, normal way of operation. And here we have access to shutter speed and gain, as you can see. So I can also change the gain value of the camera like that. And of course, I can adjust the iris with the joystick right here. Uh, pull it all way down to a close if I want to. Of course, I don't want to do that. So um, we see, let me see, um, the iris value here. And uh, we also have, what else do we have here? We have um, pan tilt uh, homing position. I, if I press that, it means the camera will go to uh, a straightforward looking pose. 
which I won't do right now because we are focused on the, the whiteboard over here for our demonstration. Um, what else do we have? We have focus mode right here so we can um, toggle on and off whether we are in auto focus mode which is the case right now or if we are in manual focus mode where we have a knob right here to adjust the focus. We also have a focus one push uh, trigger by pressing this button here. So as I said this is a menu on the buttons in the center section apart from those two, which obviously are doing something else. And now that we have just briefly touched on the pan, tilt and zoom, uh, we still we can see that we can confirm that we are panning and we are tilting if I'm using this joystick pad here and I can zoom if I'm using these binary triggers. So these are in fact binary and if you want to adjust the speed of that, you go to the system menu where you have the pan, tilt and zoom speed set here. So if I go back, you can see that pressing this button is now giving you a much slower uh, zoom speed and likewise if I press uh, the joystick pad to do pan and tilt you also see a much lower speed there. So um, that was about how to control the speed in this case. Uh, we'll get back to this menu but uh, if we go to the exposure menu again you see we have um, all these things for um, or the, the exposure mode generally. I need to go back to the auto mode to show you what otherwise is available here. Of course gain limit is there. So gain limit is the maximum gain the camera will go to if you just leave it in auto mode. So that can be useful to control with the knob right there. You have exposure compensation which is currently turned on. It means that I can raise the general level of where the camera will how the camera will expose the picture. As you can see right now it's it's getting a little lighter and that is expected if I'm compensating up and likewise you can go the other way. Backlight compensation, spotlight compensation are on off uh, toggle functions I can enable right there. Now going back to manual mode again. So um, the menu can be um, also toggled. If I press multiple times on this button you can see I'm going forth and back between a menu with exposure settings and now gain uh, point settings. So they would be like advanced um, settings for if I go back to auto mode you can see I have the maximum shutter speed which can be adjusted on this one. I have the minimum shutter speed I can ask the camera to go to. I have the uh, speed of um, auto exposure I, uh, and then I have the, the three settings that I also had in the original menu. So it was only five things that was um, shown when I toggled to, to this point. If, um, and now comes the funky thing actually and this shows the power of Skyhawk controllers. So with this single button on the upper edge I'm toggling forth and back between two menus but on the lower edge I'm going to the white balance menu. So this is a little super user trick for you guys. The buttons on Skyhawk panels are generally called four-way buttons and they offer you even more flexibility than you could ever imagine on a button press, right? Because most buttons would just accept a single trigger no matter where you press the button but all buttons on Skyhawk controllers will generally be four-way buttons so you could program them individually. It actually means you could make a button a little binary joystick to move the camera's pan tilt dimensions. In this case we used it to have actually access to three levels of menu on this button and the lower edge gives us access to white balance mode. In this case it's set to auto outdoor one push and so forth and if I go to manual you can see I have white uh, sorry red and blue gain settings that I can now adjust. Let's just try it out. So we see a very very greenish picture here. So I'm not a shader but at least I think I managed to correct the colors of the image to the better in this case. So I won't go into more details with that uh, except if we look at the various modes we have. We have um, something called white balance offset, white balance speed over here. Those and that will generally be true for anything you see me do here will be settings that you find in the uh, on-screen menu of the camera. Um, so you can read your manual and then you know what these features are doing. If we go to the next menu it's called color and detail. Um, if it's clear on the video I'm not sure then you'll be able to see that the, the displays above the buttons tell you what the buttons do. Again it's got high flexibility. It's the um, the general style that you'll find a Skyhawk controller is completely flexible with almost no labels printed on the buttons. Instead we put in OLED labels or sorry OLED displays just above the knobs and the buttons so that you can when you assign functionality to the various hardware components they will be reflected in the displays associated with them. Very strong feature, very strong technology point about our 
our controllers that we do it this way. And here we can see we get access to color if I press the upper edge and if I press the lower edge I get access to something called detail. And even here I have a toggle function that gives me access to something called super low on a second press, uh, normally bandwidth. So in the detail menu we have again um, various functions like I can go manual and auto. Um, you see the, the naming there. If I go back to color here you have uh, access to matrix functions. So there are some uh, matrix choices I can make right here, color gain and color hue. And if I want to control the R, G, R, B, G, R and G, B dimensions, I can do that with these knobs as you can see. And you may ask where are the uh, remaining two dimensions, wait, um, if I, uh, B, R and B, G. They are available if I toggle again pressing the upper edge. So here we have a button that has actually four different dimensions to it. If I toggle on the upper edge, it's in the matrix menu and giving me uh, alternative access to BR and BG. If I press the lower edge, then I have alternative access to super low if I press the lower edge. Moving on, you see knee settings right here. No uh, function associated with the toggle press. If I press the upper edge, I have gamma settings available. And again, I won't go through all of these in detail because you know what they do if you own this camera, if you read the manual. But they are here in the Skyhoy controller specifically implemented for the BRC-X400 camera. If we move on to the system OSD menu, this is where we can get on-screen menu for uh, managing uh, the camera settings if for whatever reason we want to do that. Before so, I would like to uh, just zoom into an area where the on-screen menu is very clear, clearly seen. So um, I think we are right there. And now I use this knob to enable the on-screen menu. Oh, I thought this would be better, but if I um, reduce the, ah, okay. So we may need to go to, let me see, manual mode so that we can, yeah, like that. Now we have nice contrast for the on-screen menu. And we go back here. So with the on-screen menu, of course, you can access all the settings that uh, would otherwise um, not be implemented on the RCP, which is in fact very few, if any. So I don't really know why exactly you would do that, but you can go up, you can go down. There are menu buttons here with clear labels that show you how to navigate the menu. So the final words will be about what you find in this system menu. You have a pan tilt slow, and if I turn, if it's off, then notice what happens when I pan, for instance. It's pretty quick, but if I turn it on, Sony did something really clever with this camera, which is super useful if you are following um, either like, if, if you do um, uh, e-learning recordings, or if you use this camera in a church, you want to follow someone on a stage f on a far distance, and you want that move to be fairly smooth. So. It's really great uh, having a camera with a slow pan tilt um, ability here, especially because the Visca protocol in itself does not offer a whole lot of speed steps. You have only 25 steps and that's really not enough if, if you want to have a fluent movement in many cases. Then we have a tele function on and off, so that kind of zooms in uh, twice. I think that's using the, the 4K capabilities of the camera. You also have digital zoom, you can turn on and off. It gives you more zoom range, obviously. You have image flip, you have tally as well. So if we just move the camera around, you can see we are able to control. Now I need more speed, so I need to disable this one. And uh, if you look at the front of the camera, it has uh, a small LED. I hope you can see it right here in the, in the forehead. And if I enable the tally, there is actually a red light in this little LED. Am I right? Yes. And, um, and that feature can also be triggered by a GPI input on the RCP if you want to. So using the RCP, you're also able to channel information from your vision mixing system to the camera. In fact, what you can do with our products is to make a simple form of protocol conversion so if you had the RCP also connected to such as an ATEM switcher, then you would be able to um, detect if, let's say, input three is on program, and assuming this would be camera number three on the input three, then uh, you could use that to trigger the tally light on the camera, and of course the other way when it's not on um, program anymore. Yes, finally, camera selection. So uh, we can have up to seven cameras on a, um, 
uh, on a network. So uh, you will also be able to go to camera number two, which is currently not connected, three, four, five, and so up to seven. But currently we only have camera number one. So this is what you see, but it's actually also a multi-camera RCP. There are some compromises associated with that, mainly with relation to the joystick, because the joystick will not move with the setting for each of the cameras. So that is likely to jump unless you go with auto iris, of course. And may I suggest that you would look into the Colorfly, which is another product from Skahoy designed for camera control if you have multiple cameras. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching this video about the BRC X400 and the Skahoy RCP. This wonderful universal controller is described in much more detail on our website. So click the link in the description of this video and read much more about it. Also, make sure to subscribe to our videos, the newsletter and follow our webinars online to interact with us. We love to hear from you and get new ideas for integrations.